In a discovery that could change our understanding of one of the world's most famous supervolcanoes, scientists have made a startling find at the Yellowstone caldera. After months of drilling and careful analysis, researchers have uncovered a precious and elusive substance, helium-4. This rare isotope of helium is often associated with deep earth processes that could hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of Yellowstone's past, present, and future. But as scientists continue to study this find, many are left wondering, what else could be lurking beneath the surface of one of the world's most powerful and unpredictable supervolcanoes? The Yellowstone caldera is a geologic wonder located in Yellowstone National Park in the western United States. It's one of the world's largest active volcanic systems, with thousands of hydrothermal features and geysers, including the famous Old Faithful Geyser. Beneath the surface, there's a vast, partially molten magma chamber, which fuels the geothermal activity and poses a significant risk of a catastrophic eruption. The last three major eruptions of Yellowstone, known as super eruptions, occurred approximately 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and 640,000 years ago, respectively and released enormous amounts of ash and lava. The next eruption, whatever it may occur, could be similarly devastating and affect the global climate for years to come. Despite the potential danger, Yellowstone remains a popular tourist destination and a center for scientific research, providing invaluable insights into the Earth's dynamics and the origins of life. The Yellowstone supervolcano is different from other types of volcanoes, like the ones in Hawaii and Mount St. Helens. The pool of magma underneath Yellowstone is huge, and it will take days or weeks to empty. The magma chamber beneath the caldera is estimated to be between 50 and 60 kilometers long and 20 to 30 kilometers wide. If Yellowstone were to erupt, it would be a cataclysmic event. Heat emanating from the planet's core will begin to melt the molten rock just beneath the Earth's surface. As a result, a mixture of magma, carbon dioxide, vapor, rocks, and other gases would form. The eruption could release up to 1,000 cubic kilometers of ash and lava, which is a thousand times more than the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption. The eruption could also create a massive ash cloud that could reach tens of thousands of feet into the air. The ash and volcanic debris would be carried by winds and could affect a large area, including parts of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. The ash would disrupt air traffic and could cause respiratory problems for people in the affected area. The ash fallout could cause problems for agriculture and wildlife, potentially leading to crop failures and a disruption of the food chain. If such an eruption should occur, it could trigger earthquakes and landslides in the surrounding area and cause the ground to shake for hundreds of miles around the volcano. The explosion could also cause a massive crater, or caldera to form, which could be up to 50 miles wide. The caldera could cause the ground to collapse and it could trigger tsunamis in nearby lakes and rivers. The specific effects on global climate are difficult to predict, and analyses of previous supervolcano eruptions, such as Lake Toba, vary in their predictions on how other parts of the world would be affected. The Lake Toba eruption was a massive volcanic event that occurred in Sumatra, Indonesia, between 71,000 and 74,000 years ago. It's considered one of the largest volcanic eruptions in Earth's history, and is believed to have had significant impacts on the planet's climate and ecology. The eruption expelled an estimated 2,800 cubic kilometers of ash and lava, making it the largest explosive eruption in the past 28 million years. Despite the enormous scale of the eruption, some humans managed to survive and even thrive in the aftermath. Archaeological evidence suggests that a small population of Homo sapiens in Africa survived the eruption and went on to become the ancestors of all humans living today. However, the eruption did have significant ecological impacts, including causing widespread forest fires and altering the planet's climate for many years. It's worth noting that not all eruptions of the Yellowstone supervolcano are catastrophic. Even lava flows or moderate ash eruptions are improbable, with tiny hydrothermal explosions or powerful earthquakes being the most potential threats on a human scale. The spectrum of Yellowstone activity is much more complex than just rare catastrophic eruptions. Recent studies have detected significant amounts of helium-4 at the Yellowstone supervolcano. Researchers found that the amount of helium-4 emitted at Yellowstone exceeds the average amount found elsewhere by several orders of magnitude. In fact, the amount of helium-4 discovered in Yellowstone is approximately 60 tons, which is much higher than what was expected. Although the discovery of helium-4 at Yellowstone is not a new development, as a gas has been detected in the area for decades, the recent discovery of higher than expected amounts of helium-4 at the supervolcano have certainly raised some concerns. 
While the presence of helium-4 does not necessarily indicate that an eruption is imminent, it does suggest that there may be significant geological activity occurring beneath the surface. Additionally, recent earthquake swarms have been observed at the Yellowstone supervolcano, which further underscores the possibility of significant geological activity. The increased amounts of helium-4 detected at Yellowstone National Park have caught the attention of scientists due to its unusual stability and its significance in geology and cosmology. Helium-4 is a stable isotope of helium consisting of two protons and two neutrons. The stability of helium-4 is important because it has the highest binding energy per particle among all nearby nucleotides, which makes it a building block for the production of heavier elements. According to a study conducted by scientists from the University of Utah, the amount of helium-4 being emitted in Yellowstone exceeds by several orders of magnitude the average amount found elsewhere, indicating the release of helium-4 from deep within the Earth's mantle. Helium-4 is produced during the radioactive decay of uranium and thorium, which are commonly found in the Earth's crust. Therefore, the high levels of helium-4 detected at Yellowstone indicate the presence of hot magma deep beneath the surface that's releasing this gas. This is significant because it suggests that Yellowstone's geology may be more complex than previously thought, and that the supervolcano may be more active than previously believed. While the presence of high levels of helium-4 does not necessarily mean that an eruption is imminent, it does indicate that there is hot magma deep beneath the surface, which could potentially lead to an eruption in the future. The presence of helium-4 is not the only indicator of an impending eruption, though and many other factors need to be considered when monitoring a volcano for signs of activity. Volcanic monitoring involves the collection and analysis of various types of data, including seismic activity, ground deformation, gas emissions, and changes in water and heat flow. Scientists also take into account the history and behavior of the specific volcano, as well as regional tectonic and geological factors. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory is a collaborative venture between the United States Geological Survey, Yellowstone National Park, and several other institutions. Its primary goal is to monitor the active volcanic system beneath Yellowstone National Park. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was established in 2001, following a series of earthquakes that occurred in the park, and since then it's been responsible for monitoring and studying the geologic and volcanic hazards in the region. The observatory provides continuous monitoring of the volcanic and seismic activity in the park using a variety of tools and techniques, including seismometers, GPS stations, and ground deformation monitoring. In addition to monitoring the volcano, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory also conducts research to better understand the Yellowstone volcanic system, including its geology, geochemistry, and history. This research helps to improve our understanding of how the volcano works and what hazards it might pose in the future. If the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, it would have catastrophic consequences for the surrounding area and potentially even impact the global climate. However, there are steps that people living in the vicinity can take to increase their chances of survival. The first and most important thing for people in the vicinity to do would be to follow the guidance of local emergency management officials. In the event of an eruption, they would likely issue evacuation orders and provide instructions on where to go and what to do. It's important to have a plan in advance and be familiar with evacuation routes. It's also recommended that people have an emergency kit prepared with supplies such as food, water, and medication. The kit should also include protective gear, such as dust masks and goggles to protect against ashfall. People living close to the supervolcano should stay informed about the latest developments and follow official sources of information, such as the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and local emergency management agencies. There are six known active supervolcanoes in the world today. These include Yellowstone Caldera in the United States, Long Valley in California, Ira Caldera in Japan, Toba in Indonesia, Taupo in New Zealand, and the Valles Caldera in New Mexico, also in the United States. As researchers continue to study the Yellowstone supervolcano and the helium-4 gas that has been discovered, the mystery of what lies beneath the surface deepens. The presence of this gas is a signal that the supervolcano is still very much active and capable of a catastrophic eruption that could impact the entire planet. It's a reminder that nature is always unpredictable and powerful, and that the efforts of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory to monitor and understand this volatile force are more important than ever. As we wait and watch for any signs of change, we can only hope that the next chapter in the story of Yellowstone will not be one of destruction and chaos, but rather of knowledge and preparedness to keep us safe.